Hi, I'm Pam Fox. Thank you for watching my channel. So what is the hardest part about being vegan? Well, it's probably not what you think. It has more to do with um, watching the people around you suffer than it has to do with your own diet and lifestyle. In the, in the early stages of becoming vegan, yes, you're focused on yourself. There are challenges. There are difficulties. You're learning new ways to cook. You're um, educating yourself about nutrition. And there are challenges. But, but then, for me, once I got through that transitional period and knew that I was vegan for life, that I was, there's no way I could go back, once I reached that point, I began to notice the people around me more so than I ever have before. And it wasn't a, a judgmental thing. It was just a perception thing. Noticing that so-and-so has really gained a lot of weight. Noticing that so-and-so really struggles with her obesity, just in daily functioning. Noticing that people look ill. Noticing the vast... You guys go into a public, a public place and really just look around at the people. It might be different where you live, but where I live, I can go to any public place and just scan the people. And the vast majority of them will be overweight or obese or visibly ill. And you don't need me to tell you this. We know that healthcare costs are at their highest. We know that disease is at its highest in this country. We know those things. So, yeah, it's, it's really hard feeling like I could help somebody and not really knowing how to get from here to there, how, how to help. You know, I could talk to that person. I could share my story. I could tell them they should go on a plant-based diet. They really should try a plant-based diet. But what I found, there are some people that are open to that, that, that will listen and that are excited about, you know, what the success that I've had. And they're, you know, they're um, gracious and they'll listen to what I have to say. But then there are those who don't even want to hear it. They just hear the word vegan and up, oh, you know, I had one woman that I, I just, I just adore her. And I, I was walking down the hall and she was coming towards me and she was limping and she's overweight. And I know she has struggled in her health and I know that life is just a challenge her, for her because of her health. And she was just limping down the hall. And I stopped her and I said, you know, I just want to offer a word of encouragement. I said, you know, I went on a plant-based diet about a year ago and it changed my life. You should really look into it. And her response was, oh, well, I can't give up meat. I like it too much. And she just kept on walking. I mean, she didn't even want to stop and talk about it. <laughs> and that's a typical response that I get. It's, oh, well, of course, I'm not going to do that. Of course, I'm not even going to consider it because I'd have to give up these foods that I like. I love too much. So, you know, just you, there's not even a pause, not even a moment um, to even consider it, let alone looking into it and actually informing yourself of what is really happening within our diet, within our standard American diet. So the hardest part by far, really the only hard part. I adore being vegan. I love it every single moment of every single day. I'm excited about being vegan because I feel great. I finally feel great. I finally am illness free, so to speak. And why would I, why would I, I mean, why would I ever go back? Why would I want anything else for myself? Why wouldn't I be thoroughly excited? I've been searching for answers my whole life when it comes to my health and here I am. I feel well. We don't need to get into that. You can watch my videos to, to hear about all the ways the vegan lifestyle has impacted my health. Um, so that, that by far, it's, it's very difficult. And I'm going to continue to educate myself and I'm going to continue to be more and more convinced that um, animal foods and junk foods are the predominant cause of most disease. Animal foods and junk foods are the main contributor to most, to the vast majority of disease. And I know people will say, well, where do you, you know, that's dumb. Um, you're not a nutritionist or dietitian or a doctor. Where do you come off? You know, why would I believe you? First of all, you don't have to believe me. The information is out there. We live in an amazing time, you guys, where information is at our fingertips. 
And I'm talking about peer-reviewed studies in scientific journals about nutrition and disease. There are thousands of studies out there that say animal foods are a main contributor to most disease. Junk foods are just as bad. Plant foods is where it's at. Plant foods prevent and cure disease. The information is out there. You don't have to take my word for it. But we live in a time where that information, you know, there was a time where getting access to scientific studies like this was really difficult. And it's not. We can educate ourselves. So the question I often find myself asking is, why aren't doctors sharing this information? Doctors, nutritionists, dietitians, why aren't they prescribing a health-based diet for their, for their patients? Why is there no mention of a health of a plant, excuse me, a plant-based diet? No mention of it. Why? You know, it's, and I've come up with a, a couple of answers. Um, one, when doctors, when a person goes through med school, they study anatomy, they study disease, and they study how to treat that disease with the most modern treatments, AKA, in most cases, write a prescription or they can send someone to a specialist. We've heard this before that doctors get very little, um, they spend very little time studying nutrition when they go to med school, very little time. And in this past year, I've spent a lot of time studying nutrition, specifically studying studies about nutrition and disease. Um, and yes, I go to nutritionfacts.org. That is a great place to read summaries about on studies. You know, a summarization. Dr. Michael Greger does summaries on these studies. If you don't want to read, you know, 30, 60, 100 pages of a study that will put you to sleep, you can read the summary. You can watch him summarize the study. That's a great resource for all of us. And it's extremely highly reputable. There's no controversy over him or what it's just, he's just summarizing the study. Um, so a lot of doctors don't have this information because it's not taught in med school. So that's one answer to the question why. Another one, unfortunately, and this is something I don't like to talk about because it really bums me out, is that there's no money in prescribing a plant-based diet. So doctors, um, hospitals, pharmaceutical companies, even the government, they're all very interrelated and connected. And for a doctor to prescribe a plant-based diet for a patient, there's no money in that for any of them. There's nothing to gain in that for any of them, except for maybe helping their patient <laughs> and having, you know, higher success rates within their clinic or their office or their hospital, which would be, you would think, a, a, an incentive, you know, to work at a hospital where they have really high success rate. Um, but yeah, there's no money in prescribing a plant-based diet. And then the third reason... Um, and Dr. Michael Greger talks about this. There's actually been studies <laughs> trying to answer the question, why don't doc, why aren't doctors sharing this information with their patients? After all, their first oath, you know, is to first do no harm. And they're giving someone a prescription that doesn't address the problem. It just is a band-aid. It just addresses a symptom and it has a whole list of side effects. When you can prescribe a plant-based diet first and see what happens with that. But anyway, the outcomes of a, couple of a couple of these studies were that doctors felt that if they were to prescribe a plant-based diet for their patients, that it would fall on deaf ears, that they wouldn't do it anyway, that it's too strict, it's too hard of a diet, people will fail at it. So let's go ahead and go with this other protocol of the conventional modern treatment of giving you a prescription, which is really unfortunate because... Um, it, it, it prevents us from making an informed decision based on the facts. But the good news is we don't have to wait for doctors to, to you know, rev revolutionize um, medical practices. We can begin to educate ourselves now. We can be on a plant-based diet now. That's the good news. But as far as, it, as far as, you know, it being a strict diet, it being too hard, I'm here to tell you it's not that hard. It's not a strict diet. Yes, in the transitional period, for me, 
about two to three months, there are challenges. You are educating yourself. You're relearning how to cook. Um, you're learning how to be prepared everywhere you go. You're learning that you can't skip meals. You're learning that you need to eat in abundance, no calorie restricting. You're learning that you cannot portion control. You're learning that your cells need fuel to function and that you've got to meet those caloric needs. So that means you can't skip meals. It means you can't restrict and count calories and portion control. You've got to eat, eat, eat. That's the key to success. One of the keys to success. I do a video about my tips on keys to success. I'll link that below. But that's probably the most important one is you got to eat. You got to eat. Um, so it's not that hard. There is a transitional period, but it's really not. I'm excited every day about being vegan for many different reasons, primarily for selfish reasons. I'm well, I'm no longer sick. How I'm going to share that information with my loved ones, I haven't quite figured that out. Um, but I have this channel and um, for those of you that are watching, you're looking for something. You are looking for answers, most likely because you're overweight or you're sick and you're suffering and you're miserable. And I talk about this a lot. Many um, of the suffering that takes place when it comes to our, much of the suffering that takes place when it comes to our health is unnecessary. And I know that will touch a nerve in a lot of people because you might say, well, I have an incurable disease or, you know, I'm, I'm doing the most modern, highly technological, you know, treatment for my disease that is available today. And you're telling me, you know, <laughs> that I can get better on a plant-based diet. And I don't know that. I don't know that. I know that I got better and I know that I have um, hundreds of people that I follow on YouTube that have gotten better. I know that I can go over to Dr. John McDougall's website where he lists hundreds of people who've gotten better on a plant-based diet who give their testimony. It happens time and time again. So it's not that hard. It may change your life drastically. It may be the answer for you to begin a life of wellness, of vitality, of energy, of no longer being in pain or whatever it is, of suffering, of being fatigued, of taking handfuls of pharmaceutical drugs. Those could all possibly be things of the past for you on a plant-based diet. And it's so worth it. And once you experience healing and energy and really begin to educate yourself about what's happening in your body every time you put food into it, it's either fattening you sickening you, healing you, or fueling you. Every bite that you eat is doing one of those things. So you have the choice. You have the choice. You can go and you can just trust your doctor who may not have all of the information about the latest ongoing. It's not even the latest. We've had research going back a lot of years about this. And unfortunately, the meat industry is wealthy and powerful, and they'll do whatever they can to put a lid on the information that says that animal foods are the main contributor to most disease. All right, thanks for watching.